Hey YouTube, if you remember the other day on my organic, or not organic, hydroponic gardening video, I had gotten this far where I showed you that I had holes in these uh, Rubbermaid containers and then I put the plastic bags over so to keep the sunlight out to help with the algae problem that you get sometimes. And then after that I went and I uh, planted all of these cabbages and stuff. And all I really do, and I'll, you know, is take the cabbage. Now this one here has got wilted on me because it was covered by other ones. But all I basically do is just take the cabbage out of those plastic red containers and put them into these net pots. And then I fill them with stone. This one bee stone I showed you. And you can see the um, cabbage here and, and broccoli are standing pretty tall. They're looking good. Um, this one here looks like it's a tiny bit wilted, but it'll come around. Just got to have some patience with them. Um, this one here is another one that had been covered over by the other ones. So you can actually pinch these some of these older leaves off here. And I do a lot of that with cabbage and give it to the chickens once they get real big. But they're looking pretty good and um, I think that they'll be okay. So then after I did that, and uh, one of the things I wanted to say is the good thing about this type of stu arrangement is when you have when you have these in here, if you're like me a little bit on the crazy side for organization, you might you'll be able to move if you want to like I could move the cabbage over there or put the broccoli over there by itself different things like that that's what's nice about this setup and all I all you do is make sure that there's water in there and the chemicals and I think I don't know if I showed the other day but what I used to measure out the chemicals now my workbench is a disaster here because I'm trying to figure out how to make these pumps pump this water without me doing it. I got Epsom salt, calcium nitrate. This is a fertilizer for the um, tomatoes and the lettuce and any other greens like cabbages. And then these, this is for peppers, okay, which I did not bring the peppers over yet. They go in this first bucket because they're a little too small and I'm afraid they'll be too fragile. So anyway, I have recipes written out here for peppers and for the um, other things, lettuce and for tomatoes. And the recipe is for five gallons of water. So you can calculate what it would be for seven. So like for that lettuce there are 154 grains. And th this is a grain scale for reloading. And if you guys reload you know that there's 7,000 grains in a pound. So really you can do the math when you buy the fertilizer. For instance, this, this stuff in the red container for tomatoes is called ChemGro. And it tells you that for seedling plants, um, 100 gallons of water uses um, 8 ounces or a half a pound of ChemGro for tomatoes. So then you just reduce that down and figure out how much you need for gallons and that's what I did. Okay. So for five gallons. So anyway, that's how it is. So all those plants that were in the red containers, I very simply squeezed the container so that I could get the plant out because this cup is tapered. I pulled the cabbage plants out and all I did was set them into the basket, the black baskets, and then cover them over with stone, what was ever left. Usually I plant them when they're a lot smaller than this. And what I like doing is uh, washing the um, perlite off of the plant roots before I put it in here. But this perlite was, and the plants had so many roots wrapped around that I couldn't get the perlite off. So I just put the perlite plug and everything into the basket and then just went and covered it over. Now if I was pumping this water, I definitely don't want perlite in the water when I'm pumping it. But I'm not pumping these, these are ponds so they can stay still. And then I also bought Big Bertha out here, which I hate Remington stuff because I never, in my opinion, Remington made nothing worthwhile, but I could only find a Remington. So it's 150,000 BTUs.
I was going to get a smaller one and because spring is here nobody has any real smaller ones everybody's got you know some other brand or some other not brand but size that don't work for me so I have that thing hooked to a thermostat and the thermostat kicks on and off and even though it's about 40 out the temperature in here is in the 60s so I'm happy with that so this thing's going to keep stuff going um, now getting to, to the uh, plants back here you saw the other day that I had in my other video that I had these tomato plants were in cups underneath my grow lights all I did was to um, let me get over here all I did was put new grommets in the buckets put these filters these uh, nylon mesh filters or whatever they are like paint strainers in the bucket on top of that and fill it with perlite that's all I did and then when it came time to plant I just took dug a little bit of hole here and there took the plant out of the uh, red plastic containers turned it upside down and then just planted it right in there covered it over and every four hours now this plant here looks a little rough because I accidentally had the heater sitting right here blowing at it which was a mistake last night the two of them lost the brand this one's the worst this one lost the thing here but I have faith that they'll come the other ones are looking good but anyway um, I just put them in there and like every four hours except for when it's dark I come over here and I feed these so what I do right now until I get my pump set up I just take the water container that I cut open okay I just dump a little one two three four five six seven I need a little bit more water yet let's just stir this up a little make sure the chemicals aren't sitting on the bottom eight nine ten so these things will be happy now and since it's six o'clock and it'll be getting dark in about three two to three hours I won't put any more fertilizer in those and I put the stakes in only to get the plants to stand up a little bit it helps them to if the plant's standing straight up once it uses capillary action to pull the water up through there it'll actually get stronger the bases will get thicker that's how I noticed it and that's what I've been doing so what I need to do now is I want to um, I was going to put a pump in to these buckets these big plastic containers and run a hose to these fittings and one of these has to go over on the tomatoes and drill holes in the copper now I still need to drill holes in the copper but what I've been thinking a different way is to put a sump pump in here this sump pump put it in there and instead of pumping the water into the pipe I'm thinking about pumping the water into a 50 gallon drum that maybe I can put over here somewhere with the chemicals in and I can let it run by gravity into here into these or these or and these and then when the container fills up the pump will kick on and pump the fluid back over to the 50 gallon drum now that's one thought okay that's one the one where I was going to just pump it from there right into here I'd have to be here with it but I was thinking with the with this sump pump having a float on it the container would have to be totally full before it would pump and the timing of that might work and I have to try it to see so I have to build some kind of a stand over there or maybe I'll just set the drum on top of something just to temporarily see how it drains out but anyway that's where I'm at so far and it is a lot of work getting this all set up uh, you have to remember I did move from one little building to this building so the best thing is once you get it set up it's pretty much you don't have to do nothing to it you can just look at it you know check things out wonder why 
something's not growing right or whatever and making sure to get enough water with chemicals in it and you're pretty much done. I really enjoy this hydroponic stuff because I like uh, the progress. I, I don't like seeing plants out in the uh, garden and all of a sudden some freaking bug got in there and ate them all. I, I don't go for that or a rabbit or up here a deer or whatever. This way I don't have to worry about none of that. So we're looking pretty good. Plants aren't bad. I got to get some lettuce fur in that uh, blank spots right here. I want to put lettuce in there so my wife can just walk in here and cut lettuce when she wants. And other than that, we're looking good. So, and I'm surprised that the it's holding the the um, the heat is being held in the greenhouse as well as it is. Okay, guys. Well, that's it for now. Somebody got to dig that thing up. I guess it's going to be me. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.